And so here, I'll just give you a short history of the church. Despite the fact that there is a long history of human beings just messing this thing up called the church, the kingdom still grows. Do you, do you realize that in the night he was betrayed, Jesus prayed a great prayer. And what was his number one prayer? John chapter 17 is the truth. Unity. May they be one. There's 45,000 denominations, sects, private little churches, little house groups that say the rest of them are stupid. We, we're the only ones who know what we're doing. And is there unity within the church? No. But the amazing thing is, despite all that, there is still a remnant and the kingdom grows. I'm seeing some pretty amazing things. I'm seeing people lay aside their differences. And they don't care what their sign says on the front yard. They're starting to come in. There, there's, I belong to two or three different groups just here in town. And We've got different names on our buildings. By the way, uh, some of those preachers are a little concerned about hanging around with one another, but guess what they're concerned about? What their church people think. Is there something wrong with that? Yeah. You better believe it. Because what did Jesus pray for? What was his one thing he prayed for tonight? Yeah. So I want to tell you this is this kingdom of heaven is a big thing. Jesus introduced it and launched it 2,000 years ago, and it's still going. And it's going to go with you, or it's going to go without you. You're either part of the solution, or you're part of the problem. You're either salt, or you're just stuff that's not even good to get dumped on the ground. And what's the difference? Are you part of the work? Now, I don't mean, and yes, there is an argument that things like passing out brochures at the door is part of it. But I have to tell you, the real work is people. Because Jesus didn't die for pamphlet. He didn't die that you know we might have Berlini chairs instead of pews. He didn't die that we have a 25 foot stage or a 50 foot stage. He didn't die whether the cross was in that corner or whether it was in the center. He didn't die because uh, we've got a sound booth in the back or whether it's elevated up in the back. He didn't die whether there's a baptistry there, there, or there. He didn't die because the baptistry is out in the yard. Jesus died for people. And he resurrected for people. And our number one concern needs to be people. Because who did the Son of God die for? So over the next nine weeks, we're going to learn how to be heroes. Because the original hero was Jesus. And all he did with those 12 teenagers, and by the way, did all of them get it? No, it was Judas. But he took those 12 and turn the 11 of them into heroes. And he's doing the same thing today because Jesus still scatters the seed and it grows. Is it growing with you? Let's stand and pray. Father, we just want to be heroes. We want to be hero makers. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, over the last couple of months, we've talked a lot about evangelizing our friends, and, and, and Father, we're going to talk more about it. But I pray, Father, we go beyond just talk. We go beyond magnets on our refrigerators. We go beyond just getting to know people. I pray, Father, that we start to count the cost. We start to become salt in their lives. We become light in our neighborhoods. That, Father, this church building 
the people within it, your church, becomes a city on our little hill. And that, Father, this is a place where folks are saved. This is a place where the kingdom grows. This is a place where your seed is scattered. And we pray, Father, that we're not just confined to this building, but rather we're, we're doing this wherever we go. So, Father, challenge us, inspire us. Um, we just pray, Father, we've got the same fire that you have for those who are around us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Have a great day.